Well, Blair, today we're going to look at one of my favorite chemicals to work with, carbon dioxide. And the neat thing about carbon dioxide, when it gets really cold, it doesn't, it's a gas normally at room temperature, but it doesn't change to a liquid. It changes to this solid form called dry ice. And we've worked with dry ice a lot in class. You know it's very cold, right? But we're going to look at a different property of it today. And let me just hold on to that. We'll set it up here. We've got gloves on to protect us, but if we hold it too long, it'll still get our fingers pretty cold. You can hear it there when we set it on the tile even. You know, just from the, from the temperature change that's happening so quickly with the tile, it's causing it to vibrate and makes that awful screeching sound for a minute or two. But I've got some universal indicator here, and I'm gonna pour that into this flask that has sodium hydroxide solution in it. And sodium hydroxide is a very strong base and we know that it's got a very high pH. And our universal indicator solution, we've used this in class before, but it tells us the pH of a liquid and we know that purple is a base and then green is neutral and red is a strong acid, yellow is a weaker acid. So we're actually gonna make a color change reaction using dry ice and universal indicator. And I'm going to add a little bit more of this. Go ahead and empty the bottle in there and I'll have you uh, take that beaker of water there for me and if you can just kind of fill us up to, oh, maybe three inches from the top there. All right, just keep pouring up to about right there. That's good. All right. So basically water, universal indicator, and a tiny bit of sodium hydroxide just to give it an alkaline pH. And all I want you to do, we're going to take some, we'll take a couple of these little pieces here and just drop those pieces of dry ice into our indicator solution and let's just see if anything changes. And it'll take it, take it a minute or two, but just keep an eye on um, right now, we, you know, we started with the purple color and let's just keep an eye out and see if that color changes any. Now obviously you see the, looks like smoke coming out, right? Not really smoke, what is it? Carbon dioxide. Yeah, carbon dioxide gas. Um, because through the process of sublimation, like we say, where it goes directly from a gas to a liquid, and then when we heat it up, like this water is doing, it goes back directly to a gas. So right now it's still looking purple, but as, as it changes in there, when it converts to a gas, we talked about it being carbon dioxide. And you see now it's turning a blue color, right? So something's happening inside there that's actually changing the pH of the solution. Now it's turning more of a greenish blue. You're going to see it start turning to a green. Start seeing it turning a little bit of a yellow color. So pretty interesting color change there, right? Just from adding this little piece of dry ice. But we talked about carbon dioxide being, you know, some of it in the air. Of course, we know that plants need it to survive. But there's something that we probably like to drink a lot of that's got carbon dioxide in it. Do you know what that is? Okay, Pepsis, Cokes, oh, oh, Mountain Dews, yeah. all these sodas we drink. They call them carbonated drinks because they've got this gas, carbon dioxide. That's what causes the bubbles in your soft drink. It's carbon dioxide gas. And if you look on the ingredients in soda, you'll see one ingredient that's called carbonic acid. And everybody thinks, oh my goodness, there's acid in my drink, but it's not a very strong acid. And on the pH scale, yellow means it's just slightly acidic. But carbon dioxide gas in a liquid actually makes this carbonic acid that gives it a lower pH that causes a color change. And we can take and add a little bit more sodium hydroxide and we can actually repeat the color change. Because again, that's going to change the pH, it's going to raise the pH as we add our sodium hydroxide. And you can see as it kind of sinks down in there, it's turning it back to the blue and the purple colors. But as that carbon dioxide continues to be released, it's going to first neutralize it and then change it back to an acid. So pretty neat chemical change there using simple dry ice.